Hello, this is uh, the arbor that I've been rebuilding. Put these on and diagnose it because when I put the old ones on, it was wobbling something awful. And as soon as I seen it wobbling, I knew what it was. It was these two homemade spacers in here. This one and uh, this one. So let me show you what it looks like with the new ones on there. And you'll see I got that indicator on there. I wasn't actually using the indicator because that's intense. It's wobbling so bad that you can never see it. I stuck it up there so you guys had a reference point to see how bad it's wobbling. Just something to, something a fixed object that wasn't moving. So you can see that's running really good. And what happens with uh, bad spacers, especially homemade ones, is basically they're not parallel. Both faces have to be parallel because when you tighten it down, what it'll do is it'll actually banana this thing. It'll bow it. And when it's bowed, of course, your, your arbor support, the pilot, actually holds it straight, but you got all that extra pressure working on that bushing, generating heat and just wearing it out. So you want to make sure you check that. Always spin your arbor when you uh, put everything on it. Make sure you don't have a bad spacer or even dirt in there somewhere. And basically, pretty much now to think about it, I was told to spin everything when uh, when you first put it on. Put something in the lathe, spin it by hand. Put something in the mill, spin it by hand. Put something in the grinder, you know, just everything, just spin it by hand real quick. All right, I need, what do I need? I need my nut. Where did I just leave my nut at? There it is. Let me just throw it on there real quick and just turn it on to show you that it's still not wibbly wobbly. Okay, now let's make it tight. And when I tighten this, I can feel it. It doesn't like come to a sudden stop it's real squishy which is telling you right there that you got something weird all right now let's see some magic i didn't even bother checking that but 80 or 90 thousands i mean that is horrible and if you notice well i didn't tell you which ones did i tell you which ones are bad ones this was a homemade one, so that one's bad, and this one's bad. And I kind of kind of noticed that I found the further out this way you put them, the worse it makes the wobble. I th it, it seems like it. Put them way back here, it doesn't seem as bad. Probably because it's stiffer back here when it's unsupported. And being as they're out here, I kind of doubt the blade would even wobble once the support was in there because the support, the support would hold it. If one of these was right, one of the bad ones was right against the blade, then most likely you'd see it wobble, especially if it had a bad one on each side of the blade. So just looking at the blade and seeing if it's wobbling might not necessarily tell you you got a bad spacer in there. So let's, uh, let's crack it loose and show you the bad ones. And I do highly recommend putting hex nuts on these things if at all possible. I went with one inch and a half hex. So, uh, what was I doing? Oh, I was pulling the spacers off. I think I already lost one. And even the, even the, we'll call the, the, 
even the factory ones. That's a new one there because I didn't put the blade on, so I had to add one. Even the factory ones, the hardened ones, or at least they're harder than them than them homemade ones. They're boogered up too. There you can see. Find something to point with. Right here, you'll see a gouge, and just the overall appearance of the whole face doesn't look good. Hope you fellas can see it. So I got to individually go through and uh, hone them, put, or put them, probably put them on a surface plate, piece of sandpaper, maybe even uh, see if I can find somebody to surface grind them for me. That would be the best thing to do. Surface grind in parallel. This is actually a really good one here. All right, let's. Uh, the 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 wider homemade one. It actually isn't all that bad. It's maybe a thousandth or a thousandth and a half out of parallel. But this little short thing here. Oh my God. It's it's literally horrible. I'm just going to, but the other one, <laughs> I noticed the other one too. I guess they had an accident. You'll see the, the, the golden where they rubbed. Well, then they must have took a grinder. See the little bumps where they uh, took a grinder to it? There's some. You can see, you can see facets on there. And this come from a school, so somebody brought some kid frickin' rubbed it and was like, oh my god, I gotta clean that up or we'll get in trouble. So, but anyways, let's look at this. Hopefully I can get this where uh, I remember to look at the camera and not the, not the actual part so you guys don't wander off and be staring at the floor. So there's 58. Go down here, 62, going around. 62 again, going around. Now we're dropping. 58 again, going around. 56, 57, 54. Still 54. 54. So 54 is the low spot, and 62 or 3 is the high spot. So. That thing's junk. Well, there it is. I got it all done. This is the old one. I set it beside the brand new one just for comparison. And uh turned out really good. I honed each one of these spacers. I made two new ones to replace the, the unparalleled ones they had in there. And I said I was going to make them out of something hard, and I, I realized that when I got ready to make them that I wouldn't be able to cut a keyway in them if I made them out of hard because I just got high-speed cutters. I don't know if you can even get carbide. So I just made them out of 1045 cold rolled steel. That should be all right, and then cut my keyways in them. Two of these were, oh, one was just a hair under two thousandths. No, just a hair over two thousandths of an inch out of parallel. And the other was a hair under three thousandths. So I grabbed the old sandpaper out and uh, put them on the surface plate and started the sanding. And these, remember, these are hardened. Well, I sanded them on them for about 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and I was only able to get about just a smidge over a tenth off of them. What I was doing is just putting more pressure on the long side. So I figured, no, that ain't going to work. So I moved up to the 12-inch uh, disc sander. And it still took a little while on there because I didn't, didn't do it all at once. I did it in little increments, you know, do it for a few seconds and measure it a few seconds because I didn't want to overshoot. Well, I roughed it off with that. And then I went back to the uh, the sandpaper and surface plate and the honing stains and took the rest in with that. Uh, what caused the two to be out of parallel, at least what I believe, is when the cutter slipped or when, you know, everything started slipping. Since they had that one homemade one in there that was eight thousandths longer on one side than it was the other, 
if you think about it, when you draw that down, that puts a whole lot more pressure on one side of the spacers than it does the other. So then once they started slipping, you had all that extra pressure on that one side wearing away at them. And the two that was out of parallel, they might have been right against the cutter, maybe. Being against a harder surface, maybe that's what wore the two. I don't know. I do know that it did slip for sure because this is the keyway I took out of it. And on the right is a 16th slot cutter, and on the left is an 093. And you can see they chewed right through. And when they did that, it would either loosened the spacers and they started slipping, or it would have tightened that nut so tight they couldn't get it off, which explains why this was all chewed up. They, they jammed that nut on so tight it, it got stuck. Myself, I'd sooner, I think I'd sooner loosen the nut. So whenever I put them on there, I'm always going to put it on so uh, it's in the direction it is now, if I'm thinking right. If you turn the shaft, yeah, if you turn the shaft that the cutter slips, it's going to be turning that so it'll loosen the nut. I think I'd, think I'd sooner have it loosen the nut than I would tighten it so tight you can't get it undone. But then again, since I got that hex knot on there, it should, shouldn't be that big of a deal to get it off with the impact. Because I got a one inch impact and I can either get that nut off there or that shaft will twist in half. <laughs> one way or the other, I can get it off. But anyways, yeah, it turned out really good. Uh, I went ahead and threw all my cutters on there. I was looking them over. I... I so this, that's the extent of my tooling, all the gear cutters, the one three sixteenth slot cutter or keyway cutter that's in here, and then the ER32, I bought that, ER32 call it chuck. So that's what I got for this thing so far, and two arbors. I did notice that some of the some of my cutters are three sixteenths keyway, so I'll have to make an adapter. I'll have to make a quarter inch on the bottom and three sixteenths on the top keyway to fit my slot to hold them ones. But there's also some on here that, uh, there's one, they have both. I thought that was kind of neat. But anyways, oh, and there's one one gear on here where uh, I'm kind of laughing because I think what they done, I honestly think they brought some school kid, remember this is from school, brought in a hardened gear and he wanted to fix it, fix one tooth or something. Because it looks like to me somebody tried to, to mill a hardened gear with this. Because it looks like to me, the gear cut the gear cutter instead of the gear cutter cutting the gear. It's either that, or they run it in some mildly hard steel, but they just they run it like really, really, really fast. But it's not blue like it was run really fast. It's just all ate away like it was going really slow and against something really hard. And I was a gig on when I seen this too because I. I just picture a kid standing there cranking on the old handle and looking down at the ground and the cutter's not turning. <laughs> it just keeps cranking away. Oh my, good times, I guess. But anyways, uh, yeah, my in my mind, it is definitely worth fixing these, these uh, arbors up because they're getting harder to find and they're getting more expensive. A cutter just like this one, but it's three eighths of an inch shorter than this one on MSC Direct right now is five hundred and ninety nine dollars and eleven cents. So, uh, yeah, very expensive little pieces of equipment, and they're almost nothing on eBay at this time. I think I bought the only one that would fit this on eBay right now. There, were, there was one other one that would have fit it, but the only thing with it is instead of instead of key slots on the taper, it had two pins coming out. It looked like to me like three H pins. I don't know a whole lot about the styles. These are what I bought was N M N M T B thirty taper. But there's all kinds of different tapers. Like, I, there might be more than one version of 30. That 
I guess the pen was maybe one of the other versions. And I kind of thought, but without being too familiar with it, I almost think that if you would take these out, then them pens would have fit in them slots. But I, I don't know. I didn't want to buy it and find out that I couldn't lock it in place. But anyways, turned out really good. Figured I'd make this video and throw it on the end so you could see how the finished thing looked and maybe even see how my dog looked because she's here wanting something. And there's my pile of trash I started cleaning up. So anyways, thanks for watching and uh, if you got an arbor, you know, think hard before you discard it. If it can be fixed, I, I truly believe it's worth it. Thanks for watching.